All right, so up until now, we've been making selections based on individual point numbers and primitive numbers and stuff and uh, like stuff like that. But as I explained before, like that will give you problems when you start to do stuff uh, procedurally. So what we generally do inside of Houdini is you do selections based on attributes that you set or based on groups, for example. So let's talk a little bit about what groups are and how we can make groups to do certain stuff. So let's make a, so I'm in empty scene, so let's make a node. And to show this, let's make a grid. So here we have a grid. Let's make it maybe 20 by 20. All right. So what we did before is when we selected stuff, we selected a couple of primitives and then we did a poly extrude. And then it gave the point selections here and then we could extrude that. But what we could extrude instead do for example is if we type group you see a group node appears and this group uh, can have well you can you can have a whole bunch of settings in here so let's first set our poly extrude to work on our group because right now we got a group if, if i middle mouse on this you can say group one and this group will uh, by default now put all of our primitives in here and the, the type will be set here so group primitives so everything will be put in there because the base group is enabled and nothing is put there. If I were to disable this, it would be zero. Let's call this maybe extrude group, like that. All right, so if we put our extrude now to our extrude group, you can see we get exactly the same we had before. We can just extrude our, well, our objects. So that's because, um, well, everything is in there. And in here, we can also say individual primitive numbers that we want to group. Let's say if we want to put zero in here, it will, all, it will only group uh, zero. If we type zero to 10, it will group zero to 10, zero to 50. Um, so this will just like the same as we did before when we just did our manual selections. If you type it in here, it will group them based on that. But there's other options to group as well. So for example, bounding region. So if I enable this, you see, I get a uh, sort of a bounding box. And now it will group everything that's inside of this bounding box. So you can see now I can animate this bounding box. And if I middle mouse on this, you can see extrude group contains 42 primitives. So if I just highlight this, you can see anything contained in the box will be, will be grouped. I could also put it to points, then it would group points that won't work on the poly extrude. We'll get into more into that later. I could group edges, I could group vertices. Let's keep it for primitives now because we're doing the extruding thing. So you can also put it to bounding sphere, for example, then you get a nice little bounding sphere to extrude. And also let's say we have this sphere, maybe we want to expand this thing. We have, can type group expand, which is a new node. Uh, if we put it here. And let's say, which group do we want to expand? We want to expand extrude group. And now do we want to expand it into a new group? By default, it made a new group called group expand. We could also expand it into our existing group. And then this way I could expand my group. And this way I could sort of expand or shrink the group that I made. So that's pretty straightforward. So what I could also do is let's make another group. So this also has another option. If I disable this and maybe call this extrude group again. So it also has an option for bounding object, but it says points or vertices only. So let's let's try that. So let's try a big head. Let's put down a big head, maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then put it in there. And you see by default this is so if I put it to bounding objects, you can see it's not really doing anything. It's it's if I middle mouse, you see a well, you see a, a big error sign. Middle mouse select bounding options only works with points. All right. So let's put it to points. So now you can see everything inside this will be uh, well, like all of the points inside this thing will be transformed. So from there, you could of course transform these points. So I could say transform extrude group. I could move them up. So 
Now I'm moving, so I'm transforming those points in that group. Could also do a soft transform, just the same. But then it will give me a sort of a soft fall off. Could of course also rotate, rotate it. But let's say I want to use this, and but then use it for my extrusion. Because as I pointed out before, like I cannot point put this in here because this requires it to be a primitive group. So right now we have a have a uh, point group. But as I mentioned before, in Houdini everything is just data. So this group is also just considered an, like a data type. This is an attribute. Uh, we're going to talk more about attributes later, but this is also treated as an attribute. If I go to my spreadsheet here, you can see group extrude group. So it, it will put it on here as a, as data, and everything that is a one is inside of the group. So it's a it's a point. And like I mentioned before, you can just move data around in Houdini. So what I could do is type group promote, group promote. And then let's put this in there and this in there. And I could say that, okay, so my convert from points to primitives, and then what to which group I want it to be extrude group. And now you can see that suddenly the group will have become a primitive group. And if I go to my geometry spreadsheet, you see it's no longer here, but it's now as a it's it's now a primitive group. I could also say keep original and then I have it both on the points and on the primitives. And then I could actually extrude it. So now it's being grouped by my big. Right, so that's basically just grouping. So there's a whole bunch of uh, different ways to group. I could also, for example, if I have my big here, I could also group it based on the normals, for example. So let's make another group. So. If I highlight my pig and I put, uh, like I turn on the normals, you can see, so these are the normals. These are, if they're green, they're vertex normals, but they will also, um, they also inherently, uh, can, it, you can also still still use them as point, point normals. So if you want to make something point normals, you would put down a facet, put it down, then put it to post compute normals. Now you can see they turn blue and now they are point normals. So if we, Look back and forth, you can see normals are now on the points. And if I were here, you can see, well, they are not even written as an attribute because they were just the intrinsic normal. So the normals that it has by default. Anyway, we don't really need this for now. We will get more into that later. Okay, so let's look into our group. And like there's there's other ways to, for example, to group your, your object. So let's turn off our base group. We could say, for example, to group by normals. And let's say I want to group based on the Y direction. So there will be the normals uh, from the upside. So you see the spread angle right now is super high. If I turn it down and turn it up, you can see it's grouping uh, points from the top to the bottom. So, and of course, then you can, for example, like if you use a delete node, like there's a whole bunch of different nodes you can use for stuff. So I would put this to group. You can see I can delete non-selected for the uh, for the for the points on my pig. So it's just based on normal. So I could also do it in a different direction. Let's put this to zero. So do it in a different direction. Let's say if I do this on, for example, a box, it might make then it's easier, a little bit easier to see what's going on. So if this is set to the Y, then you can see it's grouping the top one. It's not grouping the bottom one. If I put it to minus one, you can see it's grouping the bottom one. Let's say if I want to do that both, I could say, okay, let's call this extrude group, by the way, because we want to extrude this maybe later. Now it's grouping the bottom one. Let's make another one. Oh, sorry, copying the other one. So copy this one. And let's put this to one. And now it's only grouping the top one. But let's say I can also put this to initial merge to union with existing. So that what that will do is will instead of overriding it, it will add it to the existing group. So now I'm grouping both the top and the bottom one. And now if I put the poly extrude, I 
it, put it, I need to put it to the group, of course, and now I can extrude it. And now this is, of course, fully procedural, because right now I'm not using any, um, well, any point selection. So I like, even if I were to increase the, the point count here, you can see this still works. So there's all the nodes, you can group uh, range, group by range, for example. So if I were to do this, so group by range. So now it's selecting every one of every one primitives. So that's basically everything. But let's say if I put it up, you can see it will only select one of every five. So now I'm getting sort of an interesting selection. So let's say if I, if I then, if I then extrude that, it was called group one. You can see I'm getting this uh, interesting pattern. I'm getting sort of a weird, uh, a weird thing. Now it's it's grouping one of every two. You could put this to anything you want, but there's there's just a whole different uh, well selection of group nodes. But the 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 point I'm mostly trying to make with this um, with the, with this part of the video is that generally, if we're doing procedural stuff, we want to use something that's consistent, so not something based on point numbers. So if we're going to build something procedurally, we want to have control over where it happens, and groups are one way to do that. We can also do it based on attributes. So we're going to talk a little bit more about attributes in the next video, but. Like this, so, this is one way to do it. You could also group by expressions or uh, any any other way. But just keep in mind that like this is a uh, like so th this is this is a way of working inside of Houdini. So with when you're combining, for example, these uh, these groups, you could do interesting stuff. Like for example, I could say that okay, I have my I have a grid here. Let's maybe do a uh, so what do we do here? Let's Group range, maybe. So disable. Well, let's do oh, group range. Group by range. Maybe give this grid a little bit more to work with. So group by range. So maybe only select uh, select a couple of those, and maybe call this extrude group. That. Then do another group. Maybe copy this name. We call it extrude group. Disable this. Do bounding regions and do subtract from existing maybe sphere. So now you can see now I'm. Uh, okay, maybe so let me just type it in manually. Okay, that's a little bit too big. Let's do uh, seven by seven by seven. Okay, now we're doing that. And maybe we'd want to do another group. Let's maybe say, okay, I want to do a bounding sphere and then union with existing and do two by two by two. So now we get uh, maybe a little bit bigger. So we want to extrude that thing. And then, so, so let's see what that looks like when we extrude it. So maybe we want to do some interesting other operation. I could say we, let's say we could do a Boolean, for example. Do a Boolean, maybe grab our pig and do subtract B minus A. No, let's do a uh, intersect. Right, so now we made something uh, a little weird, but anyway, you can see how you can uh, like use this stuff. And now, like all of this is now procedural, so it's not the most interesting effect ever. But you kind of get what we're doing. And then again, you could like just keep keep adding stuff on top of what you're already doing. So then you could let's put this to uh, replace existing. 
1 over 8. So one more other thing that I also want to mention is that if you make a group, so what we've been doing is we've been naming our groups in here. So my group. What you can also do, for so now it's called uh, my group. Let's, uh, let's do it on a box maybe because the big also has some groups by default. So let's do it on like this, right? So my group, you can also name something if you type dollar OS, we will get more into that later. If you middle mouse now on the group name, you see it evaluates to group, uh, group, group seven. It's because this is called group seven. So you can also type here, for example, that uh, this is my group. And now this will evaluate to my group. So this is also a way to name, like if you find it easier to set your group names as your notes, so you can see, um, so you can just do it on your notes here. You don't have to dive into there. That's also a possibility. I usually just type it in here myself because um, then I can sort of give names to the notes themselves based on what they do inside of the network. But um, yeah, so that's also something you can you can use. Okay, so I kind of hope it makes sense to you why it would be beneficial to, to use groups instead of just manual selections. Because right now, of course, we can sort of automate certain stuff. Um, we can make procedural setups. Uh, our point count of our, of our geometry on the upper level can change. So we can do a whole lot of cool other stuff. So with that out of the way, and now you can kind of under, uh, understand like how the procedural nature would work with these groups. I think it's time to talk a little bit about attributes and what those are. So like I mentioned before, attributes are just uh, data, just arbitrary data, which we can use to drive certain parameters or certain nodes or do whatever we want with them. So let's talk a little bit about um, how to use attributes in the next video.